Hi, I'm Tyler. That's Josh. He had this great idea for a YouTube intro where the two of us would eat something in such a gross fashion. It's delicious. That you theoretically would laugh at how gross it was. But he made the mistake of buying something chocolate. I don't like chocolate. I think it's too bitter. I think it's too sweet. I don't even like chocolate when it has heat. That rhyme just came up to me. So I'm turning into you for this intro. Like, what's happening? Bring the pain, Tyler. Bring the pain. If by pain you mean starvation, then yes. <laughs> Which is very fitting for the topic of today's conversation. It's I swear you planned this. <laughs> no, I did not know you were going to go on that tangent. <laughs> Look, we're 30 seconds, a minute 20 in the show, and we've already gone off the rails. Fuck yeah! And we passed the 10 second mark, so uh, we're not getting demonetized. Monetize this shit. This is where it's at. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the Tyler and Josh show. Or the Josh and Tyler show. I Honestly, we've. In our last episode, we uh, made the possibility of discovering maybe we might need another trailer that. What uh, the fuck? <laughs> Another title as opposed to trailer. I don't know why I said that. Maybe because our last video was about six of our favorite trailers, which if you haven't seen that episode, mm. what are you doing? Check that out. We haven't even changed shirts. Why would we do that? That doesn't make any sense. We wore them two weeks in a row. Because exact same outfit. Well, because we spend so much time apart from one another, it really only makes sense to film this like a game show. Put it the whole season in one day. Exactly. Um, you like food, Tyler. You're a chef. That's your vibe. I'm a cook, but um, yeah. I haven't really gotten that much passion about cooking until the past few years. I mean, obviously, the pandemic not only made us more reliable on cooking on our own, but it also made us realize just how fun it is to make shit from scratch. Like, every Friday, my sister and her fiancé would break quarantine with us by, like, bringing pizza. Like, my dad and I would make the dough. Good we would stuff. add in... A lot of people don't do this, but fennel seeds and Italian seasonings Whoa. go Whoa. really good with pizza Whoa. dough. What, yeah, seriously, the, fennel what's seeds. What's the fennel, y'all? It's crunchy and weird, and I want it out of my sausage. In the dough. I don't like fennel. It's weird. It tastes just good like you with don't it. like chocolate. Oh, whatever. I don't mind things that just don't like fennel. Or chili flakes. Too spicy. But yeah, like making our own pizza dough from scratch, making our own pasta from scratch, which... um. Is obviously a little more labor intensive, but it tastes a hell of a lot better. My dad and I have made ravioli twice the past few years, which uh really good shit. Like it's again, takes a lot of work, but it is so worth it. I've no. even done a buttermilk brine of chicken wings, which uh that felt spectacular. Just brining that overnight, dredging it in the flour, putting it back into the buttermilk and then back into the chicken. Double dip fried chicken wings are exactly as good as they sound. Next time you uh, make that ravioli, one, tell me, I'll be there. But uh, also, I have your rap name, Chef Tyler D. Why D? Like Chef Boyer D. I have to explain my joke. Oh, okay. Chef Tyler D. You can you can be from the the land of Kitchener. I don't know. You can come up with a cool rhyme. I you was had I was just gonna say Shea Wolf, but um, Shea Wolf. Oh, it's Shea Wolf on the mic. It does have a nice ring to it, but yeah. In between the Disney movies and the other stuff I was streaming and the uh, various times feeders were open and closed, the Food Network kept me alive and well, especially Guy Fieri and Bobby Flay shows. Like diner, diner, and drive thing? Triple That's D is one of them. Show. That's a pretty dope show. Triple G is just so fun for how it's like a game show and a prank show kind of at the same and, time. Uh, Triple X is rattles only. What? You went there? That was such a... No. So triple D, Triple G. I mean, Triple X. I mean... <laughs> you could have said Triple E, and that would have made more sense. Yeah, there's a save file on my Game Shark. It's like Triple E. It sounds like something John Cena would say in the shower when he's trying to, like, poop. Or not. Nah, just pick it. That's how John Cena Dude, lives. this episode is about food. Do not make me lose my appetite. First you starve me, now this. <laughs> I might have some crackers around. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, food wise, you um, are down. You are down the street from uh, God knows how many we restaurants. Need burgers after this. Well, let's just go get burgers. What do you say? I'm all for it. We can go to A and W or McDonald's. Or you're the whatever. one who dro you're the one who drove. So I'm I'll, down I'll pay to go it. find food. I'll uh, I'll, yeah, lunch we'll is on figure me. it out. We'll figure it all out. Um, 
Food and movies. I thought of this topic the other day, and I thought this could be fun. And then when I thought about it, I had so many answers. Really? Because so food. I don't watch that many movies where like food is such a vital thing for even one scene, let alone a movie. Oh, like I have, I have one movie on here that takes place in a restaurant. The rest are just foods that I would like to eat. That's valid. <laughs> the one is like, I have to have a restaurant one. And I was like, I'm not going to take the Disney ones because Tyler's going to do that because he's definitely going to take some of the Disney shit. So that's not you. the one. Well, you foreshadowed a possibility on our last episode. And then I, 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 I don't have said no. I just made a joke about it. Oh, because you're going to find this a surprise. I do not have Ratatouille. I don't like that movie. It's boring. I like, I like it, but the food is not really my favorite part of it. I'll take Bolt over Ratatouille. I'm a bad person. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Bolt, but like I get why I get why anyone l- would like that one. I, I like the dog doing super things. It's cool. <laughs> over a rat that cooks. A rat has a life expectancy of a year and a half. That, sh- that restaurant's going to go from five stars to plague. That was the alternate ending, but in any case... Yeah, a rat dies in his hat, and he gets the plague, and everyone dies, and the critic's no longer around. Maybe they're just trying to kill the critic. Everyone wants to kill the critic. I'd like to find Leonard Malton and tell him something, but I don't know if he's alive anymore. He is alive, and what's wrong with Uh, Leonard He doesn't like Robocop, and I have words to say. Why would a guy like him like Robocop? He likes a lot of other stuff. He also didn't like Sleepaway Camp, but you know, we have to, you know... (laughs) Dude, you hate people that love B movies and hate Sleepaway Camp. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'd love that. You have, have a conversation such a grudge with. against Brad Jones, even though Brad Jones eats this type of shit up. That's eh, probably like the same people in our Ultraman comments. Anyway, yeah. um, let's talk about food. You got any honorable mentions here? Honorable mentions are a real tough one for me because, again, like there are so many technically so many options. Like I had to binge through so many binging with Babish episodes oh, just nice, to get nice. very specific any ideas. Chef show? Chef show was yeah. kind of more just doing standard dishes. Mm-hmm. Like only a couple. There was one episode where they recreated dishes from yeah. Chef, like the pasta, the. Um, what about the episode the with uh, D- Danny Trejo, where made the tacos from Machete? Was that Chef show or was that, that was like Machete? I thought that was just a behind the scenes thing for one of Robert Rodriguez. Nah, TVs. man, they made the tacos from Machete, and they're like freaking delicious. I want Michelle Rodriguez to well, make I mean, me a taco. When um when Robert Rodriguez was on the Chef Show and he made that gluten free crust, which I can't believe I'm saying this, it actually looks oh, good. Yeah. Gluten free is it depends how you make. You got that later. <laughs> it is like my my mom tried to make a gluten free crust that tasted more like a graham cracker, but I mean mm. the fact that she made it in the first place. Yeah, I mean like even good. with tofu, you got to season it right. If it's seasoned right, it tastes like chicken. Tofu is irredeemable. In I my freaking opinion. love tofu if it's seasoned right. I mean, did you ever go to that? Uh, there was that place. Uh, was it like Murchies, Munchies, Mikey's, Mikey's Eatery down University there. It was great. They had tofu. It was fantastic. I don't think I have, actually. They went out of business a couple years ago. I had the stamp card. When you bought eight meals, you got a free one. They had like noodles and rice and chicken. It was fantastic. Good shit. I'll just, uh, I'll just have to take your word for it. Yeah, on it don't one. exist no more. That was by the Mel's, if that helps. Around there by the University. So. I've never, down, I've never down liked down. Mel's. Um... Well, I, had to, I only had to go there just because my sister likes their gluten-free food. So what do you think, honorable mentions? Honorable mentions. That's, oh, my God. It's okay. I'll go, I'll go here. Yeah. Honorable mention. I'll take the fried chicken from, uh, from, uh, from Austin Powers, the fast bastard eats. It may come out the wrong way, but that's how Taco Bell goes in. That's some delicious-looking thick fried chicken, let me tell you. Remember when he's in bed with that random aging girl, and he's eating the fried chicken? He's like, you want some? I can't say that I do. I will take the fortune cookie because I make homemade fortune cookie and Mickey Blue Eyes. Have you seen the scene? Mickey Blue Eyes. You said fortune cookie. I thought you were going to say Freaky Friday. No, no. And like he's supposed to propose with the fortune cookie and he puts the will you marry me in the fortune cookie, but it gets mixed up at the other table and they're like, eat the fortune cookie. It's awesome. It's pretty great. Oh, um, shit. I'll take the mashed potatoes from UHF. Here's the UHF <laughs> And you says, picked a UHF movie and you didn't say Twinkie Dog? No, Twinkie Wiener sandwiches are gross, y'all. I want to eat the mashed potatoes that Terry makes. She makes potatoes. She even kept them warm in the microwave for them. They look very creamy, very smooth, not chunky, and they even come with gravy. And you can mold them into a volcano and say this means something. Those are potatoes I want to eat. Okay, fine. And uh, I'll take the stuff. Uh, there's a 1985 movie called The Stuff About Killer Kuwip. 
Let me tell you, I'm going to eat that and turn into the stuff. I have no problem eating Koo Whip. I eat it like ice cream. So that's how I'm going to go. And then um, my last honorable mention, and I'm serious about this one, y'all. I don't care what your animal rights people say. I want to eat a freaking porg from The Last Jedi. Chewie was roasting it. Looks delicious. Tastes like chicken. Give me a freaking porg. Put it on a stick. I've had bear, beaver, snake, you name it. If I can eat a porg, so can you. But those are my honorable mentions. Would you eat a porg, Tyler? No. No, no. no. I, I really can't say that I would. They look like freaking annoying crows. <laughs> you ever had squirrel? It's chewy but tasty. You don't know hunters, do you? Anyways. I know a lot of hunters. They just bring me random meat. I had kangaroo ones. Pretty dope. A few honorable mentions that I can definitely have. Um, let's see. One, I do have Chef on my list, but an honorable mention is the pasta ali olio from uh, the scene where um, John Favreau is making pasta for Scarlett Johansson. Oh, and yeah. as Binging with Babish says, she just I fucks the hell out of him. And yeah. it's a special memory for Babish because on Chef's show, Favreau actually gave him that exact carving fork for that scene. As a gift, nice. Which um he still uses in his videos as a prop to this day. Oh. It's super commendable. So would you I fuck pasta? I fucking John Favreau, genius, <laughs> or I banging, or whatever the fuck the phrase uh, no, is. No, this is a term now. I know we can um, I fuck food. <laughs> next one is the uh, eggs with grits from uh, my cousin Vinny. I just oh, yeah. love that part where um Vinny's just looking at him and he's like, you know, cholesterol is a number one killer. Which, turns out, if you know anything about lard, is that it's not exactly super big in fat and cholesterol anyways. Mm. So there's that about it. I don't it. like the flavor of lard. But yeah, um, the, ange the angel cake from uh, Groundhog Day that oh, nice. Bill Murray just, nice. yeah. just goes like yeah. by the spoonful. Yeah. And it was so delicious. Um, one honorable mention from TV that I would love to try out from SpongeBob, the uh, double battered fried quadruple burger on a stick. Oh, that's, I didn't know we could go into TV. Oh my honorable goodness! Honorable mention. Honorable okay, mention. Okay, then I want the freaking Brood Witch guys. Aqua Teen Hunger Force Forever. Also, you what know, a shock that you were gonna say the Brood Witch. I mean, that's a, that's that's got seven layers of pork made in Hell's Hound. I would have just went with the regular show's um, Insanity um, Wings. I've seen them make the the stuff from the TV show. There's a chef guy who does. I would say the Girl Scout cookies from Troop Beverly Hills. I want mint Girl Scout cookies. that You only get them part-time of the year. And since I uh, like my edibles, I've never seen the movie Smile with Anna Faris, but the entire movie terrifying. But the entire movie stems around her like eating a gigantic amount of pot cupcakes. Wow. Is that why people smile? Because they do drugs? <clears throat> That's why I'm sad. I don't do drugs. Well, I overdid my edibles yesterday, and I had like the shakes for a solid oh, 20 minutes. That sucks, Which, bro. here's the thing. The best way to get rid of those shakes is to just do a breathing pattern. Okay. So, like, <clears throat> just like breathe normally or whatever. Well, there's one where you take a deep breath, another quick breath in, and then just slowly exhale all of that. Mm. that it's what people do when they cry. Have you ever flown? Have you ever flown anywhere? This is I this is a poor question. Like on a plane specifically. Just to Florida, but that's So it. like when you go on the airplane, what does the stewardess say? Because I've always heard like comedy bits where they're like, you know, the oxygen mask will follow the sky and you'll breathe normally. Is that it's, a thing they do? Because I need to know. I like, never got any um we never got any instructions on that one. Oh, so what did they tell you? Like where the emergency exits are, or like welcome to the flight, or like how did that work? I don't remember that actually being part of the routine. Damn, like last time I die. did last time I did that was ten years ago, so Yeah, ten years ago. It's been a you long time since shampoo it's... on a plane and now you can't. Imagine my surprise on that one. Yeah. Maybe some cool cheeses from Italy too. Foreign bacteria. Uh <laughs> you wanna do you wanna start us off here at your uh just whatever your number six or whatever one you want to start with? Food wise? Yeah, I'm gonna start Food. with Food. My number six, which just like the last episode is in no particular order, just because I don't really see the point anymore. I want to be like Watch Mojo and put them in order, and then like be boring. But like, I have to number. Why them. would you want that? Why would no, you want I'm it kidding. to be boring? I was trying to watch one of their videos and it sucked, and I turned it off the other day. It's like the worst top ten list. Oh, Miss Mo Miss Mojo is even worse. I don't know. I I don't know what that is. I'm guessing it's the same thing. It is. 
But my first one is an interesting choice, but it's more of the atmosphere that this food brings. And that's just one of the great things about food. It can instantly make your mood a hell of a lot better. It has this uniting power that the movie Chef was all about. And Studio Ghibli has quite a few scenes of really good food. And in my opinion, one of the best scenes of Ponyo is when her and Sosuke are sitting down for instant ramen noodles, and she's discovering the cooking process where you just throw the noodles in the bowl, pour the hot water, and cover it for a few minutes. And it's just that anticipation that she has as this curious four-year-old girl where she takes the dried noodles, scraps that fell out of the packet, and just gives it a tiny bit of a crunch. It's just that childhood curiosity that she has, Uh. and there's that one scene where... um, Sosuke's mother gives them the hot drink. I'm not sure what it was. Like it's been the, so long since I've the, seen. The, the script literally just says hot drink, Aye. and like the close up of her stirring the uh, hot cocoa or whatever, and Ponyo just going, "Wait, what is that?" And then her just mimicking Sosuke, like blowing on the bubbles and uh, sucking on the spoon that has the honey mixed into it, and she's just savoring every single moment, like. That's the childhood curiosity that you would love to see in a Studio Ghibli movie. And Man, of course that's with a good choice. And of course with the ramen, it's amped up when uh, Lisa inserts the ham and the fried egg as a little quote unquote magic trick just because she instantly knows that Ponyo is just obsessed over ham, which um is still one of the weirdest parts of that movie, but Hey, I mean E. T. likes peanut butter cups or pieces or something. I don't know. That's weird. Reese's, weird. Reese's pieces or M&M's? I, I can't don't remember. Know. I didn't put this on the list because I don't really love E.T. I mean, I think it's fine, you know. It's but it's gotten better. It's gotten better as I gotten older. Like as a kid, I didn't get ET, but um, I, I like this pick. I did not think of Ghibli um, at all. There's so. literally only one other food scene that I can really think of that just savors the moment, and that'll be higher up on the list. Yeah, no, that's a really good pick. I mean, I haven't seen Ponyo in forever, so I mean, that's oh, I'm trust me, you've uh, you've made yourself very clear about that one and why. I like Howl's Moving Castle and Princess Mononoke, and uh, one of those choices is that higher. Up that oh, I nice, nice. They must have food in there. I was trying to think of Medieval Feast, but I couldn't think of one. Uh, coming to number six, I've got the thief, the cook, the wife, and the lover in a particular scene. Uh, Helen Mirren, who is like 20 and looks fantastic, let me tell you. Uh, I got to look up this movie then. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of... Um, yeah, you, you'll see. Uh, anyway, she's in a dining room in this strange like hotel where they cook food for like really expensive people and Helen Mirren is sitting there and the chef has specially prepared this dish. It's like a, a Yorkshire pudding with green beans and it looks absolutely delicious the way they garnish it. And she's sitting there and then she takes a bite or two and she just eats she eats her Yorkshire pudding and then she looks at the guy across the way eating the Yorkshire pudding and then they go bang in the bathroom and like Helen Mirren is young and I want that Yorkshire pudding because there's some youth in that uh, vigilance there. It's a really cool movie, like, color-wise and everything, and it has a strange ending, and it goes into cannibalism. It's so odd. I mean, recommend. I've recommend. heard all of those things. Is Tim Roth in that one? Yes. Okay, because I remember, he th- I remember like hearing a, that as, like, his big break or whatever. But He plays, like, this man who's, like, a <laughs> slobbering, whimpering slave to this large, fat, like, like so Mr. Creus Brando. Yeah, it's really weird and then like it's the strangest little thing, but it is a weird movie and I recommend it if you can get a hands on it. Who knew Helen Mirren was young? I just saw her as the old lady. Now there's that about it. I'm trying to I can't yeah. believe I have to like actually refresh myself on some of these I choices. have to refresh on the food, but I like a good Yorkshire pudding. So you know, for me I'm like, yeah, I'll eat that. That's from like a high-end restaurant. That seems like a pretty good thing. So Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm just going to get the obvious one out of the way. Like, Chef was going to be on this list yeah, no it. matter what. I didn't take it. And when it, it comes to the scenes involving food, there is not a more hilarious and heartwarming one than when Favreau, Leguizamo, and Favreau's son make the Cubano sandwiches. Because, nice. I mean, never mind that Leguizamo is one of the few chefs in movies that actually enjoys his work. Like, when he's dancing as he's rubbing the pork marinade into it. Yeah. And he's mixing everything like and super, super realistic too. like those containers that he has. Those are in my restaurant. They've been in every restaurant that I've worked in, like the exact same brand, the exact same shape, everything very specific on the um, cooking process where you mix in 
and marinate the pork for six hours, and then you cook it, and then you let it rest for an an even longer amount of time. And it isn't until the kid mentions, you know, you could have just bought it in the store. And then they slice it open. I love, like, Wazama when he looks at Favreau and just goes, are you sure that's your kid? You might have to do a paternity test. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Chef, I hate and love you. I was so hungry after watching that movie. Hey, that's a good reason. So hungry. I ate midway and was still hungry at the end when I was full. That's a good reason to hate a movie, though. Let's be completely honest. But when you try the pork, and I love when the kid, as soon as he says that and he sees his uh, elders just go, oh, that is so good. Can I have it? It's not from the store. You might not like it. Please, can I have it? No, you don't want the, you don't want any of this shit. You probably eat vegan anyhow. No, I'm not vegan. <laughs> I just love how clearly a good chunk of the dialogue is improv within yeah. this movie, which is good because when you're a chef, you got to be really quippy just to survive the grind of it all. Yeah, I was at some grill place at the mall yesterday, and they were like, you want the chicken or the pork? And they had like five varieties. I'm like, what do you recommend? And they're like, I'm vegan. And I'm like, well, fuck. <laughs> Surprise me. <laughs> I was like, oh. what the fuck is a vegan doing working at a grill place that has meat? There's like two vegetables there. It's like broccoli and green beans that are slightly crunchy. Like, get the fuck out of there. Take a pill and eat some meat. You're not going to die. Anyways, it isn't until um after they try and they decide, okay, let's make some sandwiches. And then you really get to discover what the process is of what it's like to actually make a dish from scratch where everybody's giving you a... There are chefs that give you a hard time because, you know, you're not equipped from the job. And then there are others who remember what it's like to be in that position whatsoever. Like when it's like, hey, uh, is the plant shit hot? I don't know. What are you going to find out? Do I touch it? What do you think? No. No, genius. That's right. And I mean... The part where they splash water on the pot, like, I've never seen anyone do that. And I can't really recommend that one just because, you know, your hands always have to be clean. And nobody ever really does that. Like, I've never seen a chef in the kitchen, like, actually wash their hands for 20 seconds, except for me. And, like, there's so many bottles of hand sanitizer in our basement that I just grab them on my way in (laughs) as I'm grabbing the coat. Well, because it's hand sanitizer. Like, it takes long, it takes quicker. My skin's not wrinkly because every winter, like, my skin fucking oh. cracks. That hasn't happened this winter because I'm exclusively yeah, hand sanitizer. Oh, it's my goodness. Great. When I worked in the dish pit at Crossroads and other stuff, and I would do stuff there, I'd wash my hands so much, I swear they were just dried up pieces of dirt stuck to my bones. I mean, hand sanitizer was better when we were at the cinema and we were doing the COVID thing. I used hand sanitizer. It I legitimately, easier. I legitimately wish that I had done that when I was dishwasher, but that was I mean, like I still wash my hands when I got a chance between customers. But I used hand sanitizer between customers. And I don't my do it I unless I have to, like when I'm yeah. in your house, obviously. Yeah. But um, I don't have hand sanitizer. Sorry. But anyways, like the actual process itself, where you figure out when it's hot, and like Wazamo when he just just goes. Hey, Mark, is it hot? Is it as hot as your daddy's underwear? <laughs> <laughs> but, like, processing the entire thing where every single amount of detail needs the exact amount of care. Like, how much you toast, the how much butter you put on the plant shed, how Look, much... I'm hungry thinking of the food you're describing. Yes! I'm starving now, That's and I the just whole ate Oreos. Point. Why, Tyler? Because you're the one who suggested best dishes in movies. I didn't think you'd bring up a chef! Why wouldn't I? I don't know. I don't want to be hungry right now. How much fun goes? Camera. How much butter you put on the toast? How much? How long you do it for? What ingredients go in what particular order? The pork, the ham, the pickles, the cheese. How you slice it? Which I know it sounds very trivial on how you slice a sandwich, but believe me, it fucking matters. How do you cut your sandwich? Do you like diagonal? Or like, what do you do? I do it like halfway. Okay. When um, this one other dish that I will talk about, the cross section, like mm. that's the beauty of it all. I'm gonna be so gotta... hungry by the end of this episode. Well, like I said before, you live next to a plaza where there are a million restaurants. And oh. again, lunch is on me. Like, what? order order whatever the fuck you want. I just don't want to go to Little Caesars. You know what that does to you. Oh, they, yeah, that's that's. The I point. have to go to twice a deal I... or like. Domino's. I have to go to higher quality pizza. Not that that's higher eat, quality. Dude, but. I had homemade pizza with spaghetti and meatballs yesterday. Like the spaghetti and meatballs. Oh, were nice, so nice. What do you think of my pizza when we had it? Um, it was more less of a pizza, more of a mound of meat. But you know, you did not use mozzarella. 
Uh, that's right. I only had marble. That was not marble. Ah, uh, maybe it was cheddar. I don't know. Um, <laughs> mozzarella on pizzas only, guys. Do not use any other cheese. All right. Please. I'm going to come in with a controversial pick here. Go for it. And you know the story that goes with this. Green Book. Oh, the fried chicken? Yeah, that fried chicken looked freaking good. It was like KFC when it was real. And I tried so hard to think of movies and shows that had fried chicken. And yeah. I don't know why. I and they're sitting in the car and he's like, yo, you ever eat KFC? He's like, no. He's like, yeah, no, you eat the bone, you throw it out the window. It's real good, you know? And he's doing the accent. And he's like, hey, you want to die? Have a die. Here you go. I got some fries. And he's throwing the stuff out the window. And then, and then you know, he's doing the thing. And he's like, he throws the cup out the window. And he's like, yo, go pick that up. And he's like, no, I'm not going to pick that up. Then he backs up the car. And what I would do is this stupid voice. I would walk in because I perfected the Viggo Mortensen being the stupid guy driving around another guy. And he was like, hey. So I would walk into the cinema with a bucket of KFC that I would put in the fridge. And I would sit next to a regular. Not kidding you. I did this 12 times. And I'd be like, I knew when the scene was coming up. And I'd time it and I'd walk in and I'd, I'd be like, hey, you want a leg? And they just look at me and start laughing. And then I would throw the bone backwards on the carpet after taking a bite. I got the best laughs in the business, let me tell you. I freaking love fried chicken. PFK is where it's at. <laughs> no, I actually did that, like, so many times. Oh, I, I'm willing to believe you on that. But I do remember that scene from the trailer. I've never had fried chicken in my life. Yeah, people love fried chicken. You have a very narrow assessment of me, Tony. Yeah, I'm good, aren't I? I feel, this feels weird, but, like, the guy that Viggo Mortensen played was actually an actor on The Sopranos. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's just no. I'm not even kidding. Accent. Oh, I'm oh, not it's even like kidding. A real he person? Was, yeah, he played one of oh. the he played one of the rival bosses to Tony. Oh, okay. Which is a weird assumption. I'm like, we got to do best dishes from TV because, like, the Sopranos. Because the Sopranos could fill half that list. Yo, TV. We we really need to do some TV lists. I think we got to alternate movie one week, TV I, the next week. You know what? Yeah, that yeah, probably like, would make well, a lot after more this sense. episode, we'll do some TV. I would love to do, like, top six TV shows. Just start with that. Do something simple. Or six of our favorite TV six shows. Six of our favorite TV shows. You know, the Mine list, being, the really uh, mine is slightly predictable. You'll see them all behind me because we're by my shelf. <laughs> yeah, but you got some pretty good choices on here. I'll I mean, can you tell which one is my favorite? Well, I gotta... My neck would have to be flexible in order for me uh, to... Ah, it's that, community. But... Yeah, it's community. Okay, well... <laughs> Very easy choice on that one. Yeah, I mean, like everything else would be like a toss-up, but Community's the one. Uh, but yeah, that's my uh, that's my pick for, uh, for number five because I like that fried chicken. Okay, so for number four, I'm just gonna have you imagine the kind of burgers that we're gonna have once we get out of here. Whoa! By talking about a recent example, <sighs> one that everybody loves. No, it was such a good-looking burger. <laughs> I hate this episode. The double cheeseburger from the menu. Such a good burger. I went about a burger after that episode. After I recreate. That. I recreated oh, yeah. that burger like the second after my dad and I finished watching the movie together because I had seen it twice in theaters. My dad really wanted to check it out just because. I mean, we watched the Food Network all the yeah. time together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got. I've been able to get him like into the movie theater once since the pandemic, mm. and that was just for the Sopranos prequel. Did which... you go see Rock This Town, or was that before? Okay, make that yeah, too. Because that was a good doc. If you haven't seen Rock This Town, check it out. I think it's playing for I free should, at the museum. I should remember that. I should remember that because one, seeing Rock This Town was his idea, and two, yeah. you you two actually met each other. Yeah, no, your dad's cool. He's a cool dude. He's a great guy for sure. And yeah. the fact that him wanting to see a movie in a theater was his idea. That's yes, yeah, yeah. Rare, but I mean, for the history of rock and roll in Kitchener Waterloo. And the fact that we may never be able to see that documentary again because I no, have no idea No, it's where playing for it. free at the museum in the Conestoga Mall. You can go see it anytime. They have a free screening room. They play it like three times a day. They've been doing that for the last month. I'll have to let them know soon. Yeah, no, know. it's totally free. And then the organizers are putting on DVD and t-shirts and everything. So just be patient. Christmas, you'll have everything. But, um, yeah, when it comes to the menu, it's a great satire, not just about the fine dining culture itself. Because, like, I work at a fine dining... A country club for basically the richest people within this city, and the complaints that we, and the complaints we have about our customers are definitely warranted. But the satire also goes both ways by attacking mm. the chefs for um, being ungrateful for the fact that they have to cook food their customers actually ask for. Yeah, some of the food in that movie is theoretical more than anything. Absolutely, and super 
especially when it comes to the frustrations. I mean, the first death scene in the entire movie of a chef committing suicide in front of everybody. That is a terrifying scene. Really, but it also sums up the issues that pe that chefs have with their industry. The long mm -hmm. hours, the constant complaints, the lack yeah. of communication between co-workers, all these things. And then you have Anya Taylor-Joy's character of Margot, who understands that the whole point of customer service is or in order to provide something that the customer is asking for. But while also acknowledging that sometimes customers ask for too much and can be a little too demanding. And when she goes into the chef's house, sees that picture of the one time he was ever really happy as a cook, just being a fast food short order cook. Yeah. Which, interesting choice there. I mean, I've done both. I can't really say either one. I prefer fine dining just because, like, a lot more thought and creativity goes into it. Oh, yeah. If you can get a job that's more creative in any aspect, even if it's just a little bit, that's better. But, like, I can understand people would want, why people would want to work in fast food or comfort food, just because sometimes simpler is better. Mm. And then, of course, Margot figures out the one way that she can actually escape death, by ordering something that he would actually want to cook, which mm. is the cheap cheeseburger that, for some reason, is medium, not medium rare, not well done, which I genuinely don't understand. Fine dining, what can I say? Yeah, but nobody orders their stuff medium, believe me when I, I say I would like that. a chicken medium rare. <laughs> That's yeah, because you're poisoning. suicidal. <laughs> That's food poisoning. But yeah, seeing him do it, do the hamburger like smash burger style. Yeah, yeah. Which is super awesome. It is the best way to cook a burger when you were at home. Mm -hmm. I had never heard of the term Oklahoma style, so that was brand new for me. And Oklahoma Where the wind style comes blowing down the lane. Oklahoma style is when you put the onions on top of the raw uh, patty and then flip it so that the steam of the onion goes into the patty, which I'm assuming is how White Castle makes their burgers. They don't have extent. White Castle, dude. Never had one. I've I've only heard of it for benching with Babish because of that Harold and Kumar. Seen, go yeah, to White I've Castle. seen the Harold and Kumar movie. And they yeah, and they yeah. allegedly allegedly the burgers don't touch the uh, fry pan. It's actually them steamed on the onions, oh, well, right? right? Cool. which is interesting. Nice. And of course, American cheese because it's processed shit that uh, melts with. Del Vida, baby. I've never had American. I'm strictly a white cheddar guy because honestly, don't do processed cheese. Just get the real shit. And shred your and shred your cheese first. Like, oh, you get do not cheese. buy white people cheese. Learn how to shred your own damn cheese. Stop paying more for cheese, y'all. Okay, you've watched way too much Velma, if that's your assumption. No, that's just the joke my wife always makes. Yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> but yeah, like, that cheeseburger with the sesame seeds on top, Ugh. like, just imagine it. Just a half, We're just a half hour away from it, man. Like, this is going to be a long episode. I'm starving. I'm not even hungry. Just <laughs> mention your four, your four preferred or whatever the fuck it Turkish is. Turkish frickin' delight from Chronicles of Narnia. You okay. got that one? No, but that was a good choice. I like Turkish Delight. It's good. In Chronicles of Narnia, if an evil witch was trying to lure me to her castle to sell out my family for Turkish Delight in a magical mystery land, I'd probably buy into the shtick. I'd join a cult. I'm going to be honest. I'm gullible. So, like, darn it if I don't love Turkish Delight. That's delicious. It looks great against the snow palette. She can just magically make it come out of nowhere. It's tasty. It's sugary. It's, like, the right consistency. It's in its own tiny packets, like those stupid cookies you get at Christmas that are dry and crusty and you only want to eat the pretzel ones. Darn, I love Turkish Delight from Chronicles of Narnia. Way to shorten that one as best as he can, genius. I don't know what else to say about it because I like Turkish Delight. I don't know how it's made. I think it's delicious. It's I, it's funny how in our Narnia video you described Edmund as your least favorite, and yet you would do exactly yeah, what he just did. Because he's too much like me. It's the Kronk Kukultos of Narnia. Okay, that's my Lonely Island reference for the day. <laughs> I've never had Turkish Delight. I gave it's it good. to I gave it to once as a gift to the teacher that introduced uh, Lion, yeah. Witch, and the Wardrobe as a book to us as a wow. class. Just because, like, it was at, it was at, um, it was at Superstore one time, and I just yeah. looked at my mom, and I'm like, okay, I want to give Mrs. Curry this. Okay, go ahead, which I don't think she was expecting me to ever do that. Mm. Usually for my music teacher, uh, she was a big fan of wine gums. You didn't bring her an apple? You ever bring your teacher an apple? I've seen them do it in the movie, so I figure it's logic. That's just a cliche. Besides, teachers want chocolate more than anything. What about 
caramel apples. Do teachers like caramel apples? I know for a fact one or two of them have definitely mm. had it. That I haven't I had a good sure. caramel apple in a while. It's been a while. But I personally I never had Turkish Delight, and from what I understand, it's kind of an acquired taste where either you either like rose water or you don't. It's super dope. I love it. I have it every Christmas. I've been doing it for years. My family likes it. Oh, wow. Yeah, and we just get it from Kitchen Cuttings in Elmira. It's pretty great. They make it. That was one food scene that I can't believe I didn't think of. But oh, man. I mean, like, it wouldn't have made my list, but it's still a good one. If I could mention Chronicles of Narnia in here, everything we did our rewatch, I'm like... I really like those first two movies. They're really solid films. Oh, yeah. And the third like, one, I can care less about. But the first two, I'm like, yes! I have yes. no idea. Like, are we still in the minority for not, for liking Prince Caspian more Prince than Prince Caspian is dope! Yeah! It's a great movie. It's like Lord of the Rings on crack, but for kids. I'm and one one movie. I was going to say Game of Thrones for kids. Game of Thrones but... for kids, yeah. It's like, or Big Rock. But, like, they've become, they've become so, so many, good. They've become so many Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings for kids. I mean, Legend of Korra was described uh, as Game Legend of, of Thrones Legend of Korra wasn't bad. Yeah, I watched that. Which, I mean, I totally agree on the Game what of Thrones. What about Redwall? Y'all watch that thing? Which one? I am. That is. Redwall. The mouse. It was a series of books from the 90s about a mouse that had to track down like a mythical sword to like kill the evil snake thing. The only mouse related stuff I watched growing up was uh, the Country Mouse and City Mouse. Country Adventures. Mouse and City. I know this. <laughs> oh, I know the entire song. I haven't kidding. heard it in a while. They like, they just did things. It was cute. Uh, that's what I remember. Oh, it was, it was a great, sh it was a decent show. Like one of the few kids shows that didn't have a lesson. It was just an adventure oh, story. very random. And they had like different singing lessons at the end, different songs from different countries with like subtitles, right? They had title cards yeah. of like each country. Yeah. And uh, I just, the villain had one of the dumbest names in He's cartoon history with, uh, right? with no tail, no good name. No tail, no good. The sneakiest rat of them all. Hey, he that was my Alexander. Hit. <laughs> what was it? Was like Mary or what was the what was the Emily and Alexander who were yeah. cousins that lived together? The one I remember is when they go to Paris distinctively. That's the only one I remember. See, I remember them going to India. Oh yeah, where there was like the ginger-looking poacher that kind of looks like me, but with a you brought up repressed memories I never thought I would think of again. Well, I got bored one day, and I found out that the guys who made Country Mouse and City Mouse also made that Paddington Bear cartoon from back Freaking in the day. Freaking love Paddington Bear. I mean, who doesn't love Paddington? It's hard not to. Paddington 1 and 2 is a delight. The sequel is possibly one of the best movies ever. So good. Oh, that's not a controversial thing to say, man. Like, I like Paddington 2. I like Paddington 1. They're cute and adorable. They make you happy inside. I cried during Paddington 2. When they abandoned that bear after the prison... And everything, it's like, darn it, y'all a jerk. But then they came back and saved the day, and it was beautiful. Okay, I'm going to continue with the list so that we can get our lunch sooner. I got sidetracked. No, 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 that's fine. Well, Thinking about non-food. We always get sidetracked. We oh, could, We could call it. this show sidetracked if Marmel, it wasn't already the, called that. All the baked goods from Paddington. There we go. Honorable mention, folks. There you go. Um, Out of all the Disney choices, like, this... I couldn't do any other one except for spaghetti and meatballs from uh, Lady and the Tramp because yeah. how could you not? I mean, my VHS growing up as a kid was literally the spaghetti kiss from that scene, yeah, which is yeah. still such a, an iconic moment, one of the great romance scenes I've ever seen, which is saying a lot because it's about dogs. Yo, that's like the Masterpiece Collection one, right? It might have been. Yeah, like, I remember the there being like one weird... Had a slightly different cover. Yeah, that. yeah, that probably was it, which... You know, my parents didn't give a shit. They just picked whatever one. People think but, they're worth so much money now. They're not worth anything. Well, I've, I've still got a hold of my cassettes, so, like, one of these days they will be. Yeah, in ten years, maybe. But, yeah, obviously this one's not so much about the preparation and just for the experience of it all. And, like, it's a nice introduction to romantic relationships for kids that, like, understand yeah. how this process works. And that's the great thing about the movie is that it's... It makes it abundantly clear that people don't just instantly fall in love. No. It takes time. And one of the ways to take time is to just have a nice romantic dinner between the two of them by people who genuinely want what's best for you. In the case Dude. of um, Tony and... I forget the other chef's name. I don't know. They eat spaghetti and make out. But, I mean, obviously the song elevates the food just as oh, much. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, that song to this day is just... One of the best Disney songs out there. Man, what's your Disney playlist like? Do you have, like, every movie or just, like, select ones? 
I have select ones, but like it goes on for a few hours, and I do have, <laughs> I do actually have the playlist listed. You have the Lady and the Tramp uh, song on your Disney playlist. I have at least a couple, because like there are two or three that I think are really. I hope you have the Jungle Book on there somewhere. Well, of course, like, uh, well, of course I do. The cities, the simple well, of course I do. How can I not? I just really catch. Why it. is it so hard for me to? Oh, here we go. So my playlist goes for about four hours and eight minutes. Wow. Okay. Let me just see here. I'm gonna take a look. Yeah. So if you've you... got a friend in me under the sea, I didn't have you. No, there's you've got a friend in me. The second person. There's this one with uh, Lyle Lovett singing with Randy Newman. Be like so. you. Good friend of four casts of Snow White. I forgot about that song. Uh, yeah, I go the I, distance. I put hi ho just. For, Go the distance is one of the only songs from Hercules. The Zero to Hero around. though is like the best. Yeah, one jump ahead. That's a fun little one. On my way from Brother Bear, not a bad little thing. And of course, I have the entire the Mary entire Mary Poppins, Mary Poppins. Uh, Return soundtrack. Oh, and you got some. The... Phil, you got some of that. You got the uh, the what yes, of Yes, I do have. Wow. I have Phil Collins Disney songs. Wow, you on got my Zoe playlist. Deschanel singing. <laughs> Wait, which one is that? Uh, Zoe Chanel, an important thing to do from the Winnie the Pooh movie. Yeah, because she either co she either co wrote or just Zelda sang Zelda. most of them. Uh, Aristocrat. So you got everybody wants to be a cat. Oliver and Company. They Doctor. don't have they don't have the Billy Joel version, so that's just a cheap. Yeah, they only off. have the uh, they only have the karaoke version, right? Basically, Selena yeah. Gomez's electronic version of Cruella Deville is like yeah. awesome. You got some 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 uh, Beauty and the Beast. Decent some, amount of Princess uh, and the Frog. Princess and the Frog. Hamilton technically counts. Hamilton is technically. You've got Friend Like Me by Neo. Yeah. That's, out, out of all the covers, that and the Broadway one are just Oh, amazing. good. You have Oodle Lolly, Oodle Lolly, Ollie, what a day. The only thing we've ever been copyright strikes for. <laughs> Robin, I find Oodle it weird that... I... Run through the forest. Oodle Lolly, Oodle Lolly, Lolly, what a day. I don't have a Goofy movie, but I keep uh, getting recommended that stuff. Oh, man, I haven't seen that in years. I don't even know if it's good anymore. But there was, like, that song at the end of the concert. I, I never grew up with Goofy. I but... saw it as a kid, and I couldn't tell you anything about it anymore. As you guys can tell, the Spaghetti and Meatballs from Lady and the Tramp doesn't really have that much to say, other than how many times it's been knocked off by other movies. Hell, 102 Dalmatians ripped that scene off. Yeah. There's literally a scene where the dogs and the talking parrot are watching Lady and the Tramp, while the humans are going to dinner and replicating the song, even as a kid, that was lame. You know what? Uh, there are some great Disney songs, but that's for another list. I would take Aladdin 3 has some good stuff. Oh, gosh, that's even well, I mean, we have done a Disney song list before, but I mean, we can always do we another do one. Disney list part two. Yeah. Uh, I gotta go number three, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. The Chocolate River from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I want to dip myself in there and call me Augustus Kalu. I don't know. There's something about a chocolate river. I just, I'm very interested um, in that. I don't know if anybody told you, but that's not really chocolate. Yeah, but like in theoretically, in the movie universe, it's chocolate. In real life, it's like dark. It's Please like, tell me you get the joke that I'm trying to make here. Yeah, right? I know, I know. Like, you know, someone took a number two in the chocolate. But like the point being, I want to go to a chocolate river and I want to drink a jazz of chocolate. I like chocolate milk. Chocolate milk's cool. I think it's dope. I eat it with ribs. I eat it with wings. I drink it by itself. Sometimes I just put it in my Wait, coffee. Chocolate with wings? Chocolate milk, yeah. Oh, okay. No, no, I don't put it on there. It's, I put it in my coffee as coffee creamer because it's sugar I know and that, milk. I know that sometimes there's like chocolate or cocoa and hot sauce, which I genuinely don't get. Oh, no, I tried butter once. Don't do that. By the way, um, one of these days I gotta bring you that last dab hot sauce. Oh yeah, we gotta try that. That's like in the two and a half million. This will be the My Demon Wings 3.4. Oh, trust me, it's um like one dip is palatable. I oh, know I'm coating a wing. I'm going for it. Death is imminent. But I don't know. Of all the things in Willy Wonka, uh, did you think of Willy Wonka at all on your list? Not really. Okay. I mean, I I went with my sister and her best friends back when. Why did I just do that? I don't know. What's going um, on? Back for one of my sister's birthdays growing up, um, I had to go with her and her friends and my mom to see the Tim Burton version when it Yuck. came out. And, like, we, we liked it because we were kids. Oh, yeah, when you were so a kid, not, they loved not it. Too much to, not too much to be surprised by. But, um, yeah, um, the chewing gum and the... Was it Cotton Candy or whatever? Oh, I don't know. I saw the sequel, the, the, the remake once and tried to block it out of my memory. I don't 
don't think it's that bad personally, but like, it's I not, think it's that not they could have. I feel like they could have done more practical effects for the factory. I have no. I think the cast is fine. Well, I mean, the factory is one of the few things I think actually looks better than the original, just because. The yeah. chocolate doesn't look like a sewer line. Yeah, but also I want more than one freaking Oompa Loompa. That's what I'm asking for. I don't know. I kind of like the effect of making it the exact I, I prefer practical. I've always preferred practical. That is. Well, really... yeah, me too. But like sometimes there are moments where digital... And I think Tim Burton was practical for many times and many years. And Beetlejuice is practical. And a lot of Batman is practical. Yeah. But as soon as CG came in, he has an over-reliance on it. He should use it sparingly. That's my biggest issue with it. There's actually an interview from Sam Raimi about how the more effects you use, the lazier you get. And that yeah. was after the original Evil Dead. And you look at what he's done now, and you just wonder, yeah. like... I mean, for Marvel, he sort of had to, but I'm glad... Even yeah, after I mean, Evil Dead, he used a bunch. I'm one of the few people that thought, like, Multiverse of Madness was that good a movie. I enjoyed more, it. More of an experience. It. I just wish Doctor Strange wasn't a second player in his own film. That's fine. I still, to this day, don't get that criticism. I don't know. I feel like it should be about Doctor Strange. And then yeah, also and the, jump for, the jump for WandaVision from the show to this. It's just like, okay, you gotta make her pure evil she, or make her good. You can't to be honest, I don't even think that watching WandaVision was even necessary. No, no. Like, they didn't do anything. I wish they had, like, shown just a clip from WandaVision of her turning evil, realizing she could find her kids. That's all we really needed to fill in the gap. And then, like, ah, everything else was fine in that. Well, um, here's the thing. I still think that Doctor Strange had an arc of letting go over Christine yeah. and uh, resisting the temptation of what could have been. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it could have been done better, but the sequences that were done well by Sam Raimi were done well. And the and evil like, zombie Doctor Strange, cool. And completely stand apart from any other Marvel Oh, 100%. Series. Marvel seems to be going in a direction where every movie has to be unique now, but not a good movie. I didn't get that vibe with Ant-Man, but... Well, they're trying to be unique. Somehow. It was I trying guess. to be Guardians, and it comes across more like a Star Wars knockoff. Eh, I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to see it. Sorry. Sorry. Why aren't we talking about food? Yeah, you got to go for your next food. You're like number two or so. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure I am uh, number two. On yeah, because I just did number so three point. with the Jocka Factory. Two, three, four. Okay, yeah. So my second choice is another Studio Ghibli one. Ah, it is dope. so simple, but that's what makes it great. Oh, yeah. That bit where uh, Howell makes eggs and bacon for oh, everybody, I and he uh, and as he cracks each egg with one hand, which made me so jealous. I wanted to try that, and now I'm an expert at cracking hand eggs with one hand. And then oh, he that's gets, awesome. and then he just throws the eggshells in the calcifer's mouth, which I still to this day don't understand. Which version you watch, dubbed or subbed? I'm a dubbed just because okay. I love the actors involved with it. Billy Crystal is a fire, yo. Like, people can say that Christian Bale's voice doesn't really fit Howell's, but I would argue that's kind of part of the charm, mm. if that makes any sense. I really do like Howell's it's just nice to It's just nice to hear Christian Bale say something much more soothing and in a more calm well, I voice. Mean, I mean, did he really fit Prince of Egypt, but he's in it anyway. Nobody fit Prince of, Prince of Egypt, but, um... Uh, you know... <laughs> Just a friendly reminder, the skin color on uh, everybody in Exodus was the exact same skin color in Prince of Egypt. And you still like Prince of Egypt, so... Exodus was, um, a choice. I'm sure it has its moments. Like, I've never nope. seen it, but... It's like Mummy 3 level of bad. Like, the CG is so bad. Okay, it's Ridley Scott, so I, I doubt that. It's not good. Well, I know it's not good. I watched it once in theaters and said nope so i'm better off with the darren aronofsky version of noah's ark that one was the like least entertaining i'll give it that oh i'm sure it is it is entertaining to a point but it's really dumb and yeah i'd watch it just for anthony hopkins as Methuselah. Uh, do that like an edible sounds. and just go for it man I'm just waiting for the day when magic mushrooms become a medical thing here. Because, like, in Alberta... <laughs> no, in Alberta, you can actually have mushrooms for medicine. Oh. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. Alberta's doing And people don't like Danielle Smith. I don't know who that is. The premier that keeps pissing everybody off. Oh, uh, politics and politics, you know. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. But, um... Bags and aching. The ASMR sounds of, like, the mm. bacon just sizzling, sizzling on the pan. Yeah. The fact that he's cracking the eggs on top of the bacon, mm. or at least I think that's what he was doing. Yeah. It's a little hard to describe. It looks good. Like, it's just, well, your standard hunger man breakfast. Throw some toast with that, you good. Absolutely delicious. Yeah. Where do you go for breakfast? What's your breakfast place? Honestly, um, 
You, uh, the last place my family went to breakfast was uh, Harvest Moon out in St. Mm. Jacobs. Harvest Moon's all right, but yeah, you gotta oh, go it's to... great. It's good, but I prefer lunch there actually. I prefer Kitchen Corner for breakfast. I've never had lunch for there personally. Like oh, my dad yeah. has, my dad has this strict rule of going to breakfast at Harvest Moon while everybody's in church, so that's uh, not busy. Yeah, that's a good call. And it works out. Yeah, the pure and simple is really good, but that's going to be more higher end, fancy waffles and pancake stuff. Well, like the main reason we went to Harvest Moon is because the office that we used to cater to was just down the road. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it just happened to work out. They then. do a really decent chicken dinner. I'll tell you that much. And Not they bad. do pretty solid French fries and onion rings. Honestly, they do pretty good dinner and lunch. I mean, I've had their breakfast, but I prefer dinner and lunch. I've only had breakfast, so I can only yeah. attest to it. I go to Kitchen Corner because they have a wonderful selection of Aiden's Benedict. I usually get Texas Benedict. That's my go-to breakfast. Texas Benedict? It's like steak with eggs and hollandaise sauce. Or you could so do... that's more of a Bernays sauce, then. Anyway, that's what it tells you on the menu. It's called Texas Benedict or something. It has steak. That's fair. Uh, what do I got? I got number two. We're going to the Blues Brothers. So they need to recruit the saxophone player, so they go to the fancy restaurant. And what are they serving at the table? Bread. What do I love at a good restaurant? A good slice of bread. Let me tell you, you go to Fellini's, you get that olive bread. And for me, sitting there watching, having him drink, having him, Belushi, drink champagne and eat this delicious looking bread, I'm like, that's the pinnacle. There's nothing better than that except for number See, one. See, you said saxophone. I, I thought you were talking about Aretha's place because, like, that's no, the, that's the just, trumpeteer. He's like the maitre d'. Yeah, and they I, go, do, they, I do remember and that. And they're scene. like, how much is your baby and wife? I would like to buy them. Also, minor note, Pee Wee Herman was their waiter that yeah. served the bread. Yeah. Like, yeah. that just, that's weird. Yeah, like, no, but, like, that bread just looks darn good. I don't know. You ever go to restaurants, like Italian restaurants, they just serve you bread, garlic bread, whatever, and you're like, yeah, let me eat that. I want that. And then you eat the bread, and it's, like, better than the main dish. That's what I find. That was half the time in Eastside Mario's. Yeah, oh, the bread is great at Eastside <laughs> That terrible now, granted, cheese bread. Now, oh. granted, I love their penne arrabbiata. So. I had the seafood once at uh, East San Mario's. Don't, let me tell you, don't eat seafood there. I don't think anybody goes there for the seafood. I foolishly did. <laughs> I said anybody, but carry on. I do like their just like standard pastas, you know. But honestly, you get a good bread from any restaurant, that's really what you're after. A solid bread to start the meal with a glass of wine, like that's what I want. The Blues Brothers. As opposed to the menu where you get the unaccompanied accompaniments. And I mean, it's a that stark... was such a funny scene when that happened, and I couldn't, I wouldn't have thought of that. It's such a stark contrast to when before they go to the fancy restaurant, while well, they're trying to toast bread on like this tiny little grill, and then the guy falls asleep on his bed, and they wake up the next morning, and Carrie Fisher's blowing up the house with a rocket launcher. It's just, I like the Blues Brothers more than anyone humanly should. That might have been my first R-rated movie that I was That's actually fair. allowed to have, and it was the uh, extended yeah. version too. So yeah, you know, a few more jokes, maybe five or six minutes. Oh, it's a little bit more than that. I don't know. I have the 4K. It's actually a really good restoration recommend. Oh, for sure. I gotta check it out. But yeah, like, I had the Blues Brothers when I was 12 nice. years old on my portable DVD player. Like, oh, yeah. Almost every single day. I could not believe that my parents allowed me to uh, yeah. to watch it based on how many shits or... Did I tell you about my first already movie? I'm not sure, actually. So, it was... We were in history class. It was, like, grade 9, right in high school. It wasn't the Patriot, was it? No, the teacher thought it'd be really smart to put on um, uh, Troy. Uh, you know how many naked Brad Pitt butts there are in that movie that the teacher had to fast forward through the VHS? And then she's like, okay, we're going to turn it off. and put on Gladiator, and she's like, uh. So then she put on Kingdom of Heaven, which has an equal amount of sex scenes to Troy. And I'm just like, you are not a smart teacher. Get the director's cut of Kingdom of Heaven. Oh my goodness, what a great film. I love Kingdom of Heaven, super underrated. Again, the director's cut. That might be my favorite Ridley Scott film. Um, like, I like Alien. Again, I like Alien a lot. But I really like Kingdom of Heaven and Master and Commander. Those are my Ridley Scott go-tos. That's Peter Weir. Oh. Russell Crowe did um, Oh, I'm thinking of that. And... But yeah, um, but Kingdom of Heaven, great film. Director's cut is definitely the way to watch it. It's one of those things... Like, if you watch the Ridley Scott Robin Hood, the regular cut is boring, but the, the, the director's cut has 15 more minutes of footage, and it just works. But you have to really want to watch the movie. 
I remember the first time I saw an R-rated movie in grade eight was probably Mel Gibson's The Patriot. Oh yeah, that's and it was obviously scenes. the violence that got everybody so yeah. hyped up about it. And then grade nine English, I can't remember why, but a substitute showed us Stand by Me. Okay, and, that's that's an interesting. And when point. I was in Sand Hills, somebody put on Stand by Me for a few minutes and then had that realization. Ah uh, yeah. And then I swapped to something slightly more appropriate, which was the ladies' version of Stand by Me. That now and then. I never heard of that one. It has like Demi Demi Moore, Rosie okay. O'Donnell, and a couple other women like reuniting, and then it keeps flashing back and forth from the past to the sounds present. Sounds all right. It sounds nice. It sounds pretty dull for a person in high school. It's um, it's eighties cheese, but just uh, with ladies. Well, as long as you're not watching Fried Green Tomatoes, that is a boring movie. Uh, people I've never, love it. It's I've really never boring. Even bothered. It's overly dramatic for no reason. So, is this my number one now? Yeah, it's number one, yeah. This, I objectively would say, is the best looking dish I have ever seen in a movie. It is Timpano from Stanley Tucci's Big Night. I've never seen this. So Big Night stars Stanley Tucci and Tony Shalhoub as Italian brothers. They have a restaurant, they came from the motherland, but it's struggling. And they are so desperate for attention that uh, they mail out to a bunch of critics and rival restaurateurs that... Uh, Legendary Italian singer Louis Prima is coming to their mm. restaurant specifically to meet them. Huh. So they have to come up with so many dishes on the fly, and of course there are some personal problems, whether they're relationships or affairs and stuff and stuff like that. But um, Timpano is this ex ridiculously layered lasagna. This. Yeah, this is I like one of the lasagna. You a lasagna fan? Um. Sometimes, like if it's an all meat lasagna, I'll definitely go for it. Man, do you do it's... like chicken and beef or like chicken and ham or something? What do you do on your lasagna? Because I sometimes put in bacon and chicken. I've never seen anyone put chicken or uh, beef in the lasagna. Oh, the wife doesn't like red meat a ton, so I just use chicken. But um, yeah, I gotta find the right picture to sum this oh, up. Man. But uh, this is a regular tempano. Oh, sweet. It's like a lasagna with a shell. Yeah, it's basically yeah, a baked great. lasagna where you put nice. homemade pasta, mm -hmm. meatballs, uh, hard-boiled eggs, salami, nice. lots of mozzarella and provolone. Sounds good. A, a shit ton of tomato oh. sauce, and you just fold it. You fold it into a Dutch oven. You throw it in for like a few hours, and like, <sighs> what does Garfield think of this lasagna? Seriously, though, I mean, look at that. It looks that's so just... freaking good. Y'all can't see this, but it looks great. And that's the scene from the movie where uh, they, where they come up with this it. now. Where do I buy this? Like, what restaurant would serve this? I, well, because of how labor-intensive it is, with Binging with Babish, it's, it was the second episode he had ever made. Yeah. It, took, it was a 14-hour process. Wowie zowie. And, of course, according to him, he's never going to do it again. I so unless you have like oh. a mini a miniature Dutch oven where okay. you serve like individual portions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other than that, I can't think of anything. Man, I would totally eat that. That looks delicious. The sauce and cheese all there in. Oh. I've seen the one bit in the movie oh. where they actually try it, and the rival is so enamored with it that he actually just slams his hands on the table <laughs> and just goes, "God damn it!" Like I am in this episode, being hungry. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's time for my number one. Yeah. I have the either, this is one of my favorite foods ever, and you're going to laugh at me. I really like hot dogs. I think they're fantastic. I did yell at you for not uh, including the Twinkie dog, so it's not really So my surprise. number one is Sudden Impact, Dirty Harry. In Dirty Harry, he goes in for, in, in the movie, to get a cup of coffee, put sugar in it, shoots a bunch of bad guys, he says, go ahead and make my day, but also in that movie, he gets a hot dog. It's super long, massive bun. Lots of toppings, not these tiny little hot dogs they got now. It's all beef hot dogs. You can read the sign there. It's a buck ninety nine, and damn if I don't want a hot dog for a buck ninety nine. It's actually a decent size. It seems like a value. Put relish and mustard and ketchup and barbecue sauce on that. Maybe some onions, some sauerkraut. You just go for it, man. Like I don't know. There's nothing better in the world than a simple hot dog. I like a good hot dog. What can I say? That's my food. I wanna hang out with Dirty Harry and eat a hot dog and drink a beer, or a coffee if it's morning. That's my number one pick. I should have given an honorable mention to the chili cheese dogs from the Irishmen, like... Or from Sonic. <laughs> no, but I mean, with the Irishmen, <laughs> they steam the hot dogs in oh, beer. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. <clears throat> Which, you know, 
knowing me, I don't drink, so it doesn't really yeah. matter all that much. Like, but, uh, like I, I will boil my hot dogs, I'll fry my hot dogs, I'll cut my hot dogs, I'll put them in macaroni and cheese. I literally really like hot dogs. One of the first things I tried during the pandemic was uh, the spider dog boiling those. Oh, up. yo, that's a, ah, uh, that seems like a hard thing to do. No, it's not. Do you, like, eat the individual legs? Like, like... Yeah, like, how do you go about That's it? That's your idea of hard? No, no, like, when you get a teddy gram, like, what part do you eat first? The head. You go for the head? I always go for the feet and let it suffer. <laughs> she just got me off the rails here. <laughs> you said off the rails so many times, like, we could have called this off the rails if that name wasn't already taken. Hmm. Fuck, fuck off the rails. That's the <laughs> Fuck off the rails. I do kind of like that. Fuck off the rails. This train is headed for a destination unknown. Death. We're eating raw chicken tonight, folks. <laughs> but yeah, uh, any other honorable mentions? Anything we missed on the uh, the food list? I just thought of one now. The uh, yeah. steak and eggs from Torn from Twister. Whoa. Where I there's like the mashed potatoes and that beautiful looking gravy. There are the eggs from um, Cool Hand Luke boils 50 eggs or something. I don't know. It's not on the internet. Damn. I don't know what you do with 50 eggs. <laughs> yeah, neither would I. I almost uh, I almost put the uh, Patty Mobile from the Spongebob movie. That counts. It's a movie. But, like, you can't eat it. That's true. But, of course, Spongebob also said you don't need a license to drive a sandwich just because <laughs> that's Spongebob and driving, uh, so. Spongebob is not for me. I'm glad you liked it, Tyler. <laughs> I liked it back in the day. Nowadays, I can't even understand why I sat down for it. it I don't know. I never got it as a kid looking at anything. <clears throat> we'll do something TV related next time. Yeah, we might have to. We'll have to do point. like six shows we like or something. And just do that. Is that a topic you want to do? We could just discuss this right on camera. Uh, we could also think about it too. You know what? Fuck it. Sure. Six Next week, six shows we love. TV related. Cool. Uh, Were you expecting me to say something? I'm so fucking hungry. Tyler, promote yourself. <laughs> you can find my channel in the description below. I do movie reviews, and coming up, I have a new segment on my channel called Poster Post notes. notes. Poster. Post poster notes. But I have er like listed as posted, so yeah. just as a little reference to that. Where my first video I have, I discuss in a Bob Ross fashion, if Bob Ross dressed in all black and sunglasses, like I did, for the Matrix Reloaded. Because nice. that glowing Matrix rain poster is just so damn Yeah, cool. it's super dope. That's like the dopest. You should know, you're the one that gave it to me. I know, right? I got you the poster. Uh, check out all the stuff in the links, we the best, all our stuff there, PB and J, working on some new stuff, hopefully upload a new short soon. Uh, we're just gonna, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta eat these things and do the things and tell her say something awesome! <laughs> Food is better in TV than in movies. Oh my goodness, yeah, they have cooking shows. Alright, we'll see you next time on The Josh and Tyler Show. In the I'm words Joe. of Guy Fieri, adios. <laughs>